Hello and welcome to the People's Third Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of February 4th, 2020. Today is to recap basically what we're doing is we'll recap yesterday about this, how the Senate voted 50 to 49 for the budget resolution to help kick off the um, uh, reconciliation process. Which means we will see a bunch of amendments from both sides as well as a series of votes on these amendments. Um, that may or may not make it into the final bill basically, right? One of the first provisions came from Republican Mitt Romney from Utah, the state where I live in actually. His proposal is called the Family Securities Act, where he is pushing to give families $4,200 per year that that's basically for the dependents part, which basically breaks down to um, children from ages zero to five. They're gonna get three hundred fifty bucks a month, and and then from ages six to seventeen, you get two hundred fifty bucks a month. And this would last until they were basically eighteen years of age. And in fact, I actually got a clip of what he said right here, so I'll let you guys read that. And I'll be right back. And basically, the funny thing is, is Mitt Romney's plan is actually a bit more generous than the Democrats' plan was. Their plan was basically along the same lines, but to phase it out at a certain time before the age of 18. So Mitt Romney's actually being pretty generous for Republicans, surprisingly. This provision from Mitt Romney may get enough support from Republicans if there is to be a bipartisan agreement. Romney says his plan is basically deficit neutral meaning that he was willing to he wants to cut some provisions in the current bill that the democrats are, are bringing up to make it so that this will not cost any additional money on top of 1.9 trillion dollars that they're looking for um ronnie's plan makes these payments last the, for the basically until the child is 18 years of age which is a pretty long time depending on when how old the child is at the present time some of the benefits Romney wants to cut affects the rich over other groups, which would go a long way to getting more Democrats on board for his idea. I, I gotta agree. With, I mean, he, he's sounding more smarter because he's willing that he's well, he's realizing that. Sorry about that. That the um, rich people are not actually paying their fair share of taxes because that's where the middle and lower class come in. We're paying. We're paying for them. And they're getting all these tax credits and keeping all their money to themselves. And the whole trickle-down effect that I, I discussed earlier in, in episodes, I think last month or month before that, that I, I said it was proven that the trickle-down effect does not work. It's, a, it's basically a sham. But we'll see what happens with that one. Any member of the Senate can propose any amount, any amendment that they want. That's right. Any member of the Senate, like Republican or Democrat, can propose any member they want. The pro from what I understand, the Republicans have hundreds of proposals with no relation to the stimulus itself. One key issue for the stimulus is who should be eligible for the direct payments or the stimulus checks, basically. Some Democrats and Republicans have suggested lowering the income limit to decrease the total cost of the bill, as well as make it more targeted. Some Democrats are thinking about decreasing it to $50,000 for a single filer, $100,000 for a uh, joint filer. And Schumer and Warner introduced a bill calling on Biden to forgive up to $50,000 worth of student loan, federal student loan debt for each borrower. But we'll see what happens with all this stuff. I will keep you guys informed as to everything that happens. So until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening. And I'll broadcast again to you guys tomorrow. Bye.